Here we are at the famous MCG, the greatest sporting venue in the world and the home of football. For 150 years, St Kilda heroes have literally poured their blood, sweat and tears onto this ground. It's where fate and destiny have been decided by the bounce of a Sharon. And the two central figures that know this better than most are waiting for us inside. Lenny. Hi oh, Joey! How are, How are you mate? <laughs> Good to see you. Got you in deep thought. Yeah, just having a look at it out over the over the G mate. Yeah. What do you what comes to mind when you stand here and look at the MCG? What's your first thought? Some of the memories that come back are, you know, the big games that we've played in here and, and the full the full stands and just brings you back to that grand final day when we came up and just every seat in that southern stand was just full, which was absolutely chockers and just the feeling, that spine tingling feeling you got when you ran out in front of that crowd. What were your overall memories of, of 2010? There wasn't time to really gather your breath unless you're on the bench. You know, there's some games where it's stoppage after stoppage or you're not involved in the play and you actually get a bit of time, but it was just so helter skelter and I actually felt like a bit like that in 09 too and I felt like I learned a bit of a lesson going into 10 not to spend all your tickets so early because I remember getting a quarter time 09 and I was just absolutely <laughs> rooted so um, yeah 2010 just an incredible contest low scoring every every contest was just maximal effort and maximal consequence in some ways. You know you did win the Norm Smith medal who could forget that wonderful speech thanks everyone we'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for all the supporters for coming out see you next week thank and you. We got close we obviously got got within a point um, it was a real seesaw that last quarter uh, we hit the front remember BJ's mark which yeah. He jokes about if we had have won that grand final, he thinks there'd be a statue uh, of him with that with that moment. It probably would have been. It would have been one of the most iconic moments, for, certainly in St Kilda's history. But last play, just over a minute to go, kick from half back to a contest. I was lurking around. You were front and square, and, and you won that footy. And the kick goes into the pocket. Butchered the kick. Well, that, I want to talk to you about that because did you really think about that kick and what you could have done? Well, before? it's probably in reflection I did. Like, and I think like I went. I've gone over that that play in my head so many times from, from where we kicked at Long Rui, who took the mark, we're all yeah, up the ground, we there was no representation down the field, he had to wait, he was really smart, held it, waited till we got there and we'd actually practiced that at training a fair bit, crumb came off perfectly and I, I felt I was under you know, a fair bit of pressure and on the day, the, the, I think the decision I made was the right decision. But when I look back, I'm like, oh, maybe I had a little bit more time. Oh, I did lay a little, I laid a little block for well, you. Where was the there. voice, mate? Yeah, I, I know. It was voice. unusual for me to lay a block, to be honest. <laughs> I think a lot of the focus was obviously on Milne and could he have grabbed it, could he have not. But I guess the way that we are, you self-reflect too in that situation, would you have done anything differently? And my, I guess my thoughts were that, well, maybe I could have, you know, it could have been a drop punt to advantage. But I think, yeah, that, that's just, that was just my take on it. It's going to be a draw. It's unbelievable. But it's happened. <laughs> Maybe it is time to chat to the man who did get the bounce of the ball to go the right way, the man who did get the only premiership, Barry Breen. But I appreciate your time. Good on you, Joe. Mate, you're Always a star a of the footy club. You know, I mean, you're in folklore for a pretty historic moment and uh, it's still a pretty special achievement. But nice to be back out here and reminisce with you. Absolutely. Thanks, mate. They're all on the ball. There Stinger. they go. Up goes Minor. He gets a tap down. Potter has it. He can't break clear. It's taken by Breen. That's a point. It's a point, St Kilda in front. Well, Barry, thank you for your time. We are pretty much in that pocket here that we, we talk about that kick there. Yeah. It was, a, it was a, a drop mark from a Collingwood defender. The ball was kicked out of bounds. It was a boundary throw in and then a ball up. It was just over a minute to go. So everyone knew roughly there was, wasn't much time left. You picked the ball up. Was, you, was your first thought, was it, was it just, just get it somewhere near the goals? Was that no, no, you no. I, look, there's a moment, the, the gap opened so that yeah. it sprung out of Ted Potter's hands. Yeah. Um, and there was no one between me and the ball and yeah. beyond. So I did line it up. I mean, yeah. I did have a shot for goal. Yeah. I just didn't execute it the way I would have liked to. And um, it was a point. So, which probably in hindsight, if it had gone back to the centre of the ground, they get it out, yeah. kick a goal, it's a draw. Yeah. So we don't want another draw. Yeah. So um, it was fortunate. What were the feelings like? Winning that grand final, I mean, a bit of history, the first ever St Kilda team to win a premiership. What, what are your recollections about sort of post that and, uh, and the feeling of winning one? Well, we were the first team to run a lap of honour with the cup. Right. But Jeansy said to me, once we got the cup, he said, you, Rennie, you take the cup around. Me, yeah. forget, the rest of the, the forget the rest of the yeah. team. But anyway, we all went yeah. and um, that was a, a moment you remember. 
I don't think I could finish the lap. I was knackered. And um, then we come into the rooms and all hell breaks loose and champagne, everybody yelling and screaming and crying. Um, it was pretty special. And to win a grand final by one point, that's the most emotional thing I think I've ever seen in my life. It's all part of our history and you've been one of the biggest figures in it, so we appreciate your time. It's still an iconic moment and hopefully soon another bunch of St Kilda players can join you in the 1966 team. Let's hope so, Joey. Thanks for your time, Barry. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Welcome to Ballarat. St Kilda was able to access some local talent from the Ballarat area and one of St Kilda's favourite sons, Danny Spud Frawley. Everyone has heard about Bungaree, all because of your dad. What are your recollections? What are some of the, the memories that jump out? Going into a few of the team meetings and picking up a few words that I shouldn't have picked up. <laughs> From Ballarat to Moorabbin there was Tony Lockett, Danny Frawley. What, what was the, those sort of stories and locker room banter like about the boys that used to travel back and forth? A few beers and a few uh, pizzas on the way home and a few sort of distractions, a few deviations, yep. detours and all that sort of stuff.